Hey everyone, my name is Hashem. Thanks for tuning in to another Pushing Film video. Today I'm going to talk a bit about the importance of light sources when it comes to scanning your film with a digital camera. It's something I have somewhat limited experience in, but I have done some experimentation with different light sources and I thought I'd share my findings with you. I've touched on this a little bit in the past in some of my previous videos, such as the Essential Film Holder Review, where I had a section within that video called A Note on Light Sources, and I compared a couple of the different uh, light sources I had, including the Logan one that I have here, which was the only one I had at the time. And then I compared that with a light that I had at the time upgraded to, which was this Viltrox L116T, which I have been recommending and using for the last year or two. And I even included another light into the mix. And in that video, I could already see that there was a substantial difference in the results when scanning film between those different light sources. And most recently, the people at Negative Supply were nice enough to send me their 99 CRI basic light source for digitizing film with a camera. And I used this to compare some of those previous light sources I mentioned and took the opportunity to put this video together just to give you an idea of some of the differences when it comes to light sources with different CRI and a little bit more on light sources in general when it comes to scanning film. So if you're not familiar with CRI, it stands for Color Rendering Index, and it's basically an indication of the accuracy of the light source, how well it can render colors within the different spectrums and therefore give you differing results when it comes to your especially color film scans. So I'll have chapter markers in this video as I've been doing lately in case you want to skip to any particular sections of the video. But basically the format of this is that I've taken some frames of film and scanned them using different light sources and put some comparisons together. I've mostly scanned color negative film and then done an example of some slide film just to get an idea of how that could differ as well. I'll be comparing the Negative Supply Basic 99 CRI, the Viltrox L116T, this Falcon Eyes sort of generic uh, F7 pocket light, which I know is available under a lot of different names as well. And I've also got the Logan light pad I mentioned previously, and this iPad Pro, which I borrowed from Sarah, which I don't have too much experience with in the past using for scanning. So let's jump into Lightroom and have a look at some of the results I had in these comparisons. All right, so we've got all our frames here in Lightroom to have a look at. And the first one I wanted to compare was this frame made on Kodak Portra 160, which is of this Motel in the Pentax 645N. And running from left to right, we've got the negative supply 99 CRI light source, then the Viltrox, and then the iPad, and then the Logan. And just to give a quick overview here, just to give a quick glimpse of the results that you can probably expect between light sources is that you can see the accuracy decrease from left to right, not so much between the first two, but definitely from after the first two with the iPad example here being the third one, there's a really unusual color cast in the greens and just the saturation seems a little bit off, not as natural. So for whatever reason, the results that I got with the iPad in this first example were not quite accurate and even more so in this last result using the Logan light panel where you can see not only an inaccurate rendering of the colors but also this kind of light leak looking effect in the greens in the top corner and I don't really think it was a, a light leak or shadow necessarily but I do think it's down to the actual light panel not giving a very even illumination and the fact that the somewhat diffused looking output might not be as diffused as it could be and that it is important to make sure you raise the film away from the panel and this one i don't think i raised it intentionally just to kind of give you an idea of what happens when you put a, a a film holder directly over your light source even though it might look diffused um, it is definitely better to raise it away from the light source but when it came to comparing the first two being the negative supply and the viltrox with 99 cri and 95 cri respectively the results weren't hugely different but one of the things i do notice straight away is with the 99 cri is that you get a better and deeper rendition of these blues probably something you could replicate in post if you really wanted to but just straight from the raw conversion that i did i saw more intensity in those blues maybe a little bit more so even in the reds here in this um, sort of shrub and a different rendering of the greens. The greens in this image on the right seem to lean a little bit more yellow, whereas on the left one, they lean a little bit more blue. But let's examine that further in some of these next frames. So this one is a portrait on uh, taken on the Nikon FE with Kodak Portra 160. The one on the far left here is the actual lab scan that I got, just to give you an idea of how that compares to all of these. And again, the way I've ordered them, you can see the color accuracy somewhat decreasing as we move to the right. But in this case, it's not so bad because what we're comparing 
is um, just getting rid of the lab scan here. From left to right, we've got the negative supply on the left, the Viltrox L116T in the green label here, the next one over. And then we've got the um, Falcon Eyes F7, which I mentioned in the intro in this third one with the red label. And the very last one being the film scanned with the Logan light panel, where again, you can see that washed out color, that weird cloudy effect on the top and just less color depth in general. So you can already make a conclusion from these results, as I've already noticed in the past, that using a light source that doesn't have a listed CRI or isn't at least 95 will not yield the, the most ideal results when it comes to digitizing your film with a camera. And this time, even though I had placed the diffuser to double diffuse the Logan, um, it still gave the unusual color shift and rendition of those greens especially and of the warm tones of the skin the skin almost looks purple in this particular uh, comparison here when looking at it next to the negative supply so just to put them in comparison view you can see there's a really unusual rendition of um, the skin tones being a little bit purple ignoring this um, chromatic aberration which was due to the lens i was using yeah you can see a big jump in accuracy when you go up to 99 or even 95 uh, cri light sources but let's compare some of those just to give you a quick look you got the negative supply still on the left and the Viltrox on the right. Uh, the main difference I'm seeing here is, again, as we saw before, more intensity in the blues and in the reds, in the skin tones and in the jeans here. The, the blues in the 95 CRI Viltrox light seem to lean a little bit more red. You can kind of notice that in some of the neutral areas, such as in the concrete here. There is a little bit of that reddish purple hue to the neutrals. And... Overall, though, there's not a, a big difference. There's a little bit more color pop that you can see a little bit in the trees there in the background in some of these warm tones of um, this sort of shrub um, just behind here. And overall, though, not a huge difference, but we'll dive more into that later. And when looking at the Falcon Eyes F7 now compared to the 99 CRI, again, Falcon Eyes has a 95 CRI rendering index, but this time, again, it was diffused on top of the built-in diffuser and the result was quite respectable but again you can see a little bit more depth in the warm tones very similar to what we noticed in the comparison for the Viltrox and also in the blues a lot more intensity in the the blues of the jeans there so this just sort of reinforces why it's important to make sure that you add a diffuser to your light source and you raise it away from the light source too if possible so let's look at another frame here and Again, with the iPad, I, I probably need to eliminate this from the comparisons because there's probably something I'm doing wrong here or there's something that's that's going on causing these red blotches, which I think might be due to the fact that the iPad had a screen protector on it, which is one of those matte ones. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. But it overall, it just gave a very sort of unusual level of saturation to the scans that I made with the iPad, including some other tests that I'm not showing here. And the problem is that when I added a diffuser and raised it away from the iPad, what I found is that the the overall strength of the light almost got too weak to make a decent shutter speed for the scan. So this is something that probably needs further experimentation that I will touch on more at the end of the video. But for now, let's compare the 99 CRI to the Logan light panel with the unlisted CRI. So with the Logan, you can see that the neutrals in the pants look kind of off. There's a bit of a red undertone and just the overall color depth and vibrance isn't quite as good. When we look at them in comparison view here, you can see the um, warm tones, especially exactly the way I, I noticed in one of my initial tests a couple of years ago. Um, they don't render quite as accurately and uh, just the overall uh, color depth, including those neutrals that we mentioned. So just looking at another 35 mil frame here, we've got some Fuji Superior Premium. And this time comparing 99 CRI to 95, I wanna focus on this a little bit and talk about, is it worth the upgrade from 95 CRI light sources to something with 99? And my short answer is that you'll notice some difference, but it's not huge. As long as you're using a light source that's at least 95, I think you're going to get very decent results and you're not going to notice a huge difference. Some of the things that I've seen in my results, mind you, there could be a lot of variation depending on the actual light source that you use, even though they list 95 CRI, might not actually be the case. Or there could be subtle variations from brand to brand, from panel to panel. But just some of the things that I've noticed with the negative supply 99, is that it generally tends to give a little bit more depth to the reds and the blues once again. Looking at the warm tones in the um, ladies jumper here, there's more pop and depth in those oranges and yellows. Same with um, the skin tones. 
And just overall with the blues, they seem to be a little bit more accurate to what I notice in the lab scans with looking at the sky here. The skies in the Viltrox uh, light on the right seem to have a little bit more of a red undertone in those blues, whereas in the negative supply scan, they kind of lean a little bit more blue-green, kind of like what I did see in the original lab scan. Now I do notice it a little bit more in frames like this one where there is a lot of blue, a lot of intensity in this frame from Kodak Pro Image in the sky. The 99 CRI light source on the left does have more intense blues and you can definitely see that noticeable red shift in the skies in comparison. So that is something that I've been noticing a pattern so far, but again, there's nothing wrong with the scan made with the Viltrox and you probably could edit those colors to match. It's just that what I'm getting from the straight scan seems to be a little bit more accurate with the negative supply 99 CRI light source. And in one more comparison here, we'll notice it even more strongly in this frame because there's a lot of area of blue sky and this is taken on Kodak Ektar, which does accentuate blues. And you can see a lot more intensity in those skies, a bit less of those red undertones and a more neutral rendering of that uh, concrete area in the foreground. So when we zoom in, you can see with the 95 CRI in comparison on the right, there's a little bit more of a, a red tint to those neutral areas that I've mentioned a few times already. So that can kind of give you an idea of the difference between 95 and 99 CRI light sources if you're looking at upgrading or um, investing in something to start off with. It might be worth it for you if you make a lot of scans and you just want the most accuracy straight from the get-go, but you'll have perfectly fine results also with the 95 CRI panels like the Viltrox, and a lot of that can be tweaked in Negative um, Lab Pro, for example, or going even further with Lightroom, boosting some of the vibrance and some of the HSL if you really want to. But yeah, that's some of my findings so far. What I want to do next is compare the results I got with slide film. So just putting these next to each other, you can see what I've included this time is a frame from the Naritsu, from the original lab scan that I got. So I'm just going to remove some of these other ones and just do a one by one comparison. What we've got here first is a lab scan compared to the home scan made with the uh, essential film holder and the negative supply 99 CRI light source. And one of the first things you might notice here is that with the Naritsu scan, it is high res, it is really sharp, but you notice a lot more noise in comparison to the DSLR scan. This is just sort of a side note that the DSLR scan shows the actual grain rather than this um, noise that perhaps resulted from the over sharpening applied by the Naritsu. And you can really see it here in these steps in the detail reproduced in the grain and in the actual steps in this frame of Fuji Provia 100F. In terms of the colors, however, uh, the 99 CRI light source has done a great job. It's got a little bit more intensity in the blues and in the reds once again, and a slightly different hue to the oranges and yellows that you can see in this bag here and in these um, little prints of the oranges on the, on the other bag. Uh, but overall, respectable result from, um, from both sides. But let's look a little bit more and compare between 99 and 95 CRI, for example, here. Not a huge difference once again. When we zoom in, you can perhaps see a little bit more saturation in the warm tones of the skin and in that red in the background. Again, nothing else has changed here but the light source. Uh, but, it, but yeah, slightly more intensity in some of the blues and reds in this frame of slide film. But you'll notice a lot more difference once again when you're comparing to something like the iPad that we have here. Once again, iPad gave very unusual results, heavy red cast. Um, not as much evenness and separation between colors. And then the last comparison we have here is between the negative supply and the Logan light panel, which in the opposite example from the iPad, instead of having a heavy red cast, has kind of a heavy yellowish green cast and a lot less uh, color depth, especially when you zoom in and look at this um, beautiful red that you normally get on Provia that you would come to expect being quite washed out and desaturated in the Logan light panel and an overall sort of yellowish look that you'll see in um, in the Logan light panel scan on the right. Yeah, just less, less color accuracy compared to what I actually see when I look at the frame of slide film. The blues look off, they look kind of purplish. There's a lot less vibrance and saturation and just these um, patterns here. Yeah, you can, as we've established already, notice a good jump up when you go from one of the generic light sources to something with at least 95 
um, CRI when it comes to scanning film. All right, so that's the comparison of the different frames that I've looked at. Even in just this rudimentary look, I think there's a few key takeaways that we can make from this comparison. Now, the first one is that you will notice a considerable difference when you jump up from something with an unlisted CRI or a lower rating that's below 90 or 95, and then going up to something with 95 or higher. As I demonstrated in some of those scans, you will see a jump, especially if you're going from something like one of these um, smaller light pads that might not have quite an even rendering across the actual panel. And especially if it doesn't have uh, a CRI listed. With this one, I tried to do some research and I think it's somewhere in the 80s. So there definitely was an improvement that I've already seen in the past when jumping up to 95. The second big takeaway is that the diffusion of the light source is really important when it comes to making scans. I've had quite a few people message me showing me example of scans they've made and converted with negative light pro where they've had some blotchy unevenness in the scan, especially towards the edges or something along those lines. And what I think that might often come down to is that the light source isn't giving an even and diffused enough illumination of the film frame to give a nice even scan. That's why it's quite important that even when you're using something like these smaller F7 or similar lights that I'm not sure if you can see it in the video here, but you might notice that there's little spots of uh, the bulbs underneath the light that you can actually see, even with the diffuser on, that kind of um, have differing colors with warm and cool light bulbs combining to create what should be a 5600K even daylight balanced illumination, for example. But then it might not be diffused and even enough, which is why it is important to, to make sure the light source is diffused as well as being far enough from the actual film holder that you're using. So to further exemplify that, even with the Viltrox L116T, which I've been recommending and using for a while, you can actually notice the little tiny dots when you actually look at this in person um, on the actual panel. So it's not a perfectly even and diffuse source when you look at it, which is again, why it's quite important to make sure it is diffused and where something like using the essential film holder, which includes the diffuser can come in handy or making sure that you get a diffuser for whatever film holder you're using, because it will turn that uh, previously uneven light source into a nice and even one for getting better film scans. The other advantage is that raising the light source a little bit away from the actual film frame will generally yield better results. I did some testing and found already with some of these that putting the, the film holder directly above the, the, whether it's a tracing pad or the iPad or something like that, even though the light might be quite diffused, won't give you as good a result as raising it up about an inch or so from the actual light source. Another thing to note there is that masking off the light wherever possible will be helpful. In some of the scans I made for this uh, video comparison, you'll see that I used just simple black paper to mask off any of the stray light. And I also did turn off any other room lights when making those scans, which is quite important uh, when it comes to digitizing film with a camera. So what's been your experience when it comes to differing LED light sources when scanning your film with a digital camera? Uh, what are your takeaways? Feel free to share them. It might be helpful to other people. And what do you think I could have done differently? What would you like me to dive deeper in into the future with some of the stuff I've already sort of touched on in this video? For example, with the iPad, I did find that I didn't get the greatest results and it could be for a number of reasons I'm not aware of. So if you're quite familiar with using something like an iPad or iPhone, uh, let me know what is the ideal version or or type that you want to go for the model. This one is at least a few years old. It's an iPad Pro, but I think that because it had this screen protector on it, perhaps that could have been messing a little bit with the light output. It could have just been um, another factor that I'm not aware of. So feel free to, to share your findings because I know I have heard that you can get good results using the iPad screen. It is meant to give a fairly good and even uh, light output, but for whatever reason, I wasn't able to get that with this one. I also found that when adding a diffuser on top of the iPad and raising it off, to an ideal distance. The light strength got a little bit too low and it meant having to use long shutter speeds, which wasn't too ideal. So I think that's something I could do a little bit more study on in the future, but I'd be keen to hear some of your advice and findings when using something like an iPad. So I'll keep doing more tests on all this stuff. I'll definitely have more videos on the channel coming up on film scanning, including some new gear from Negative Supply and other companies. So look forward to that. Definitely share your results and findings and share your expertise in the comments in case it could help other people out. Let me know what you'd like to see in any upcoming videos. And thanks for watching. I hope you found some of this helpful and I'll see you in the next video.